prince and the seven dogs. In a kingdom far, far away, there lived a king called Adam and a queen named Scala. They lived in a humongous castle as tall as a skyscraper. Everyone in the kingdom loved the king and the queen. They were kind and caring and wanted to help the people of the land. There was one thing missing from the king and queen's life. They wanted a son and a prince for the land. The king and queen prayed every day and night for a charming new prince. They always prayed for a handsome young boy. They wished for a prince to name George. They would give him everything he wanted, love him with all their hearts and make sure he came to no harm. One day their dreams came true. It finally happened. The queen would give birth to a handsome prince. He was the most handsome prince that ever lived. He had brown hair, blue eyes and just looked like the king. A few years after the birth of the handsome prince, sadly, the king had fallen ill. He couldn't look after the family any longer. As the days grew in, into the nights, the king passed away. The family were devastated. The queen's heart had been shattered into a million pieces. The family's lives were never going to be the same. They wished they could have the king back just for one more day to make memories and share precious moments. George and his mother passed time by painting and walking in the woods. One evening, whilst walking along the path in a wood, they were approached by a stranger. The stranger was a tall, handsome man who had a wavy blonde hair and eyes that sparkled in the sunlight. The man introduced, introduced himself, to himself. His name was Jack. Jack could see that George and the Queen were upset. Jack walked closer to the Queen and her dear son and asked, Are you both okay? introduced himself to the pair over time. They became friends. They would meet for walks and spend time together playing in the castle grounds. The Queen decided to let the man into the castle. George loved to play hide and seek with Jack in the castle. The games would go on for hours. There were so many rooms, so many hiding places. Jack soon joined them for the royal banquet. He has invited he was invited to the, to the important inv event as the Queen's guest. Over time, Jack was given his own room in the castle. Jack soon wore the King's clothes and the servants began to treat him like a king. The Queen had fallen in love with Jack. She had thought she could have never replaced her husband, but Jack was kind and vowed to look after her. Jack knew that that would be his chance. He asked the Queen to marry him. She said yes. After a month of planning the royal wedding, the best guardsmen would order the largest band would play and the most delicious food was made. Everyone in the kingdom was invited to Jack and the Queen's special day. The wedding day soon arrived. It was to be the perfect day. The Queen was dressed in white from head to toe. She was the most beautiful as crown. The jewels sparkled. The Queen arrived at the wedding in the royal carriage. The humongous horse pulled the carriage, holding their heads high. Jack was to soon be the proudest man in the land. He looked out at all the people. He soon realised he w his wish had finally come true and he would be the new king of the land. There was a special job for George at the wedding. He had formed a, fa a special friendship with Jack. Jack would be his best man. After the most amazing wedding, all was going well. The Queen had finally fallen in love again, something she thought she would never do. And Jack had a father figure, a new best friend. It was now time for Jack to put his plan into place. Jack had started to feel that he wasn't getting the attention a king should be having. It was George, the handsome prince who the people were really interested in. Everywhere they went, people would wave and speak to George. George received gifts and money from the people. Jack was furious. He was very annoyed at George. Jack knew if he wanted to be the main man of the kingdom, he would have to get rid of George. Day and night, he plotted and planned. He ordered his men to, to the drawing room. Jack ordered his most royal guard to kill George. He ordered him to take George into the forest and put an end to his life. At first, the guard was unsure. 
came up with a thousand excuses why he couldn't do it. Jack did not listen and told the guard that if he didn't carry out his order, then he would be killed. The next morning, the guard was on duty. It was his turn to supervise George on his nightly walk. He led George into the forest. The nervous guard couldn't complete his master's order. He explained Jack's plan and told him to run for his own safety. Immediately, George took off into the wood, into the forest, to find safety from Jack. When the guard returned later that evening, he broke the news that George had gone missing, that he had ran off and he could not be found. The Queen ordered her men to go out and search for her precious George. They returned empty-handed. Days turned into weeks and George was still nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, George had found shelter. He found a small abandoned cottage in the darkest part of the forest. George was tired from running away and entered the cottage where he was met by seven small beds. Not normal beds, but beds were covered in hay. He thought it was odd, but decided it would be warm and dry for now. George fell asleep in one of the beds, but was awoken by growls and barking. He was surrounded by a hunting pack. At first, the pack exclaimed George was parking and prouding him, licking their lips. George was terrified. He thought the pack were going to kill him. George had one chance he had to explain what had happened. After some convincing the dogs, they became friends with George and they, wa and they wanted to help him. George decided to write his mother a letter. The letter explained that he was safe and wanted to return. One of the dogs took the letter from George to the Queen's castle. It explained Jack's awful plan. She immediately questioned Jack. Jack denied everything and said it was all lies. George and George didn't like him. Jack fled that evening and followed the dog back into the forest. He was on the hunt for George. He wanted him gone forever. Jack soon came up with another plan. He no now knew where George was hiding. He watched from a distance until the dogs went out to hunt. Jack, all dressed in dark, approached the cottage and knocked at the door. The door creaked open and came George. A little confused, the dark shadow appeared in the doorway. Would you like some fruit? asked George. No, thank you, replied George. Go on, my child, insisted the man. It's very delicious. George had recognised that voice. He had realised that it was that horrid man, Jack. George bravely invited the man into the house and asked him to take off his cloak. As he did, George shouted for his friends to return. They dashed back to the house and began to attack the man. Jack managed to run into the forest where he was chased by the dogs. The dogs, George's new best friend, chased him out of the forest. The dog soon returned to tell George that Jack had gone and that it was safe for him to return to the castle to see his mother. George returned to see his mother. She was delighted to see her precious son. George explained everything that had happened to him. George pleaded for his mother to allow the dogs to move into the castle with him. She agreed and they became the new royal family.